Then you're safe. Then you're safe. Okay, today we've been talking about cool cars. So I thought I'd show you a used car that's never gone out of fashion. The Volkswagen Golf. There are cars that are cheaper, there are cars that are prettier, and there are cars that can drive better. But if we're talking about style, if we're talking about the X Factor, then we've got to talk about the Golf. When it was launched in 1974, the Golf defined what the small hatchback was all about. And in the 80s, the Mark II secured the car's status as a style icon, with the help of some brilliant TV ads. It's here today and gone tomorrow, but the world goes on the same. And in the caring, sharing 90s, the Mark III Golf once again captured the mood of the times by selling itself as safe and green, even though it was heavy and dull compared to its predecessors. A lot of people said with the Mark III that Volkswagen should stop making the Golf. It's gone too soft, but they didn't. <laughs> Launched in 1998, the Mark IV has the same dependable, reliable character as the Mark III. Although these later versions will never deliver the excitement of the Mark I and Mark II, if you're using your head rather than your heart, they're definitely the best second-hand buy. You can pick up a good mid-90s Mark III for about four grand, or the later Mark IV with reasonable mileage for about six and a half. One of the reasons that these cars hold their value so well is the styling. I mean, it's very conservative. You could buy a Mark III, which is quite a lot cheaper than a Mark IV, and nobody would look at you and go, oh, cheapskate, but it still looks the part. As a used car, this is the ultimate get-out-of-jail-free car. If you park one of these on your drive, your neighbours will never know how well you're doing or not. So what about engines? Well, you could go for a 1.4, but they're desperately slow. Then you've got the 1.6 and the 2.0-litre. I'd actually go for the 1.6. It's only 15 brake horsepower less, and it's a couple of insurance groups lower. My recommendation is, if you want a second-hand Golf with real performance, buy a diesel. You can buy a second-hand Golf diesel with 110, 130 or 150 brake horsepower, but combine that with the torque you get from the diesel, and they'll embarrass any of the petrols. So if you fancy buying a used Golf, what else do you need to know? Well, a couple of things. Number one, unless you've got to, I would steer clear of buying the automatic. It's only a four-speed gearbox on all but the very latest models, and with that, you're going to dent performance and economy. One thing that is worth hunting down, though, is air conditioning. It's not standard on most models, but it's a really nice option to have. Oh, and finally, colour. Colour is very important. This should be the most desirable Golf that money can buy. It's a GT TDI. It's even got air conditioning. But look at the colour, it's a horrible, horrible green with a horrible, horrible interior. Which means that this car is worth £500 less than a blue one, or a silver one, or a black one. You see, the Golf has always had style, but in this colour, it's out of fashion. So Jason, you're always telling us clever ways to save a few quid, yeah? And we can save 500 quid by buying it in the wrong colour. So mm. logically, you buy it in the wrong colour and save the money, don't you? Yeah, you've got to live with the car, though, haven't you? I mean, yeah, it's, there's nothing worse than driving something that you really are ashamed of. You can get it right. I mean, some cars work in some colours, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah, I mean, there's classic colours like Jaguar, it's silvers, it's blues, it's greens and that kind of stuff. And what's that launch colour you see on cars sometimes? It's like a yellowy, mm. autumnal, barley gold. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake! Enough of their autumnal colours. I want to 